Hi, my name is Lee Williamson. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. Hi, my name is Joby McEnough. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. Yes, Reggae Boys Commentary, like and subscribe, yeah? Oh. Reggae Boys Commentary, like, share and subscribe. Yeah. Reggae Boys Commentary, <laughs> subscribe, like and share. Is that the right order? Yeah. Reggae Boys Commentary, like, share, and subscribe. Hello everyone, I'm Simon Preston, and welcome to Reggae Boys Commentary. It is the day before the night before. Yeah, kickoff coming up. Uh, before we get into this video in particular, I've enabled the Super Chat feature on our channel now, so you all can show your love to Reggae Boys Commentary, and I look forward to your love in the comments. So... You should be able to see at the bottom of your screen the super chat feature for you to contribute to the channel. So I look forward to you all to help out Reggae Boys commentary. I've enabled a super chat feature, so you guys should be able to hop in and support the channel. So I look forward to your continued support and all of that. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you just tuning in as well, I see those persons, Javon, and Christopher McKenzie saying big up, up top Adam. So I'm going to be doing a, a live report from the game. Uh, for those of you that have access to Television Jamaica at 7.45 tomorrow, I'll be doing a live report on the game if you want to check that out. So that'll be like a, a halftime report in the sense for you to check it out on, on TVJ Sports at 7.45 p.m. Jamaica time. So you can do check that out. Really, really appreciate this. I see all the comments coming in and really appreciate the love that you have been showing me for for this sort of venture i really really do appreciate do it check so, that out so really hope everybody is doing well and yeah the super chat feature is now available so guys show me your your support <laughs> uh, i really really appreciate it and uh, yeah i think it should work out quite well now so i'm going to be getting to your comments quite shortly and yeah that should be should be good should be should be really really good so let's go through the the questions shall we super chat is working and up and running blessing simon has taxi been released from his club taxi says that he'll be speaking with me on the matter after tomorrow's game so i hopefully get an answer from him but it seems like he will be moving to another club in the near future so let's see how things progress where that is concerned i do think the possibility exists where he will be moving on to another club so We'll have to stay tuned for that. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So just hoping for the best. And we will see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. It's going to be uh, an interesting, compelling next few days, months, years. So let's see. Let's see. We shall see what happens. Let's see what else you guys have been saying in the comments. IS Abdi says, what's up, Simon? I'm good, I'm good. What happened to McGee? Why can't he get in game at this time? I'm going to be doing a separate video for this, and I will be addressing that quite shortly. I will be addressing it quite shortly. I certainly will be. Up, Simon. Up, we are go. Qatar, we are go. <laughs> hey, Adam, hope you're doing good, man. And yeah, after this live, you can give me a call. Will there be fans in the stands? No, the, this is the fourth home game out of five now. Seven home games. Panama, no fans. Canada, no fans. USA, we had fans. Mexico, no fans. Costa Rica, no fans. So our fifth home game and the fourth one without spectators. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Studio Michael Ellison says, Up, Simon. What's up? Ronaldo Biggs playing in the reserve team for his team. Yes, that is correct. That is correct, 100%. Amara Brown says, Jeff is a waste. Travis says, Big up. Up, up, the general, up. Romario Brown says, I blame them big time for not making it to the World Cup. Jadine White to Phoenix Rising FC confirmed. Not confirmed just yet. He is on trial at the club. Do the club like him? Yes. But they do want to see another two days of training session before being able to offer him the contract. 
personally, I believe that he will sign for Phoenix, but I must not hide the fact that there is interest from the Pittsburgh Ripper Hounds. How did Luca fare on his debut? All right, so Dulwich Hamlet, they they played over the weekend, and that's where we had Luca Levy making his debut for the club. And they played against Hungerford Town, and they lost 3-1 in that game. It was an away game. Dulwich Hamlet, for a lot of people that may not know, they're a team based in South London, and they play in the sixth tier of English football. As it relates to where Dulwich Hamlet is right now, they're currently ninth in the the sixth tier of English football. They're on 34 points, and they are seven points adrift of the top three. So that's something for them to to work on as they continue their journey being a National League South team. They, they play in the same division as Bath City FC. That's where, of course, as you know, Omar Holness plays. So that is a situation as it stands for Omar Holness and Luca Levy and company. So, yep, it is what it is, you can say. So, we shall see. Yeah, we shall see what happens, don't we? We'll see what, what happens over the next couple of days, weeks, months, years. And then from there, we'll be able to see how these players go on. A lot of people make the and say that, you know, we, and in terms of players and, and, and how they perform, that this tier should not be used. But let me tell you guys something. It shouldn't be based on the division that you're in. That shouldn't determine where you are that shouldn't determine it at all to be honest with you so i don't know why it's that measure i don't know why it's that way but yeah you know it is what it is so we press on as they say and hopefully it's a scenario where these players get the opportunity and get to move up in the leagues a person i feel Omar Holness can play in scotland i think he's capable of that but you know we shall see at the end of the day. So, hmm. it is what it is. It is what it is, eh? So, yeah. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Yeah, that is correct. Hey, Simon, any word on Alex Marshall? Alex Marshall is at has recovered from COVID. The game against Panama, you can see side lack organization and togetherness. Management caused that for sure. Guys were running like cut off headless chickens, no chemistry. How many points did we get for 1998 World Cup? Three wins and five draws. That is 14 points. Yeah. Bear that in mind. Out of 10 games, won three games. Costa Rica 1 0, El Salvador 1 0, Canada 1 0. Drew five. Five games. Can't reach a World Cup and man just make debut. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're 100 percent right there. Simon, I'm worried about a rift between players brewing and things now being said. I think some meditation may be needed soon. What are your thoughts? As far as I understand, there is no rift between the players, no division between local and overseas based players. No rift. Peter McGregor, what's the latest on him? He went on loan to a second-tier Swedish club. The Swedish club is trying to decide if they should keep him or not. Stephen Ramdeen says, hello, Simon. Hey, what's up, boss? As you can see, I've up, up, I've made Super Chat available right now. So show your support to the channel, guys. I would like to see if it actually works. Even if it's one US dollar, let me see if the Super Chat works at the end of the day. And I will continue to bring you guys the latest information and give you in-depth, comprehensive, reliable content on the Reggae Boys. You know, that's my promise, and I'll ensure that that is a, a, a reality and ensure that it, I will always be credible and let you guys when something is absolutely confirmed. And I'm not going to lie to any of you all. So let's talk about Dimitri Mitchell a guy that we have spoken about on this channel for some time in the past as well. Yep, the same Dimitri Mitchell. Same, same, same Dimitri Mitchell. That same Dimitri Mitchell that, that Manchester United. Yeah. Yes, he's made his intentions clear about wanting to play for Jamaica. So... And I've made that clear up to two years ago when I had a conversation with his uncle at a Manchester United versus Everton game at Goodison Park. So 
it's not like I was leading you guys down a direction. Before Tapa was sacked, I told you Paul Hall would be the head coach. And it happened, didn't it? I told you Damon Lowe was going to end up at Inter Miami and it happened, didn't it? Yes, it happened. I told you that J.D. White has not signed yet with Phoenix Rising FC and you saw what the head coach said today. He's there on trial. Now, if you want my view, do I think he's going to sign for the club eventually? Yes, but I can't. I need to be objective and say at the same time that there is interest brewing for him at the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, who are equally as interested in the player as he is. So we can't ignore those facts. We can't ignore those information. So it's something that we're going to have to live with. So, yeah. Would love to support, but YouTube doesn't allow Jamaicans in Jamaica to send super chat. Ah, uh, yeah. I understand. I understand, bro. One of those things. In time. Big up, Simon. Yeah. Simon, where do we go from here? Play the young guys or build? We'll play our best 11 tomorrow. Whatever happens, if Panama goes and beats uh, Mexico, then so it go. But tomorrow we'll play, we feel our best team. We'll go all out tomorrow. And whatever happens, we take it from there. For the March window, though, if we're out of contention completely, like no chance of fourth at all for the last three games, then we look to build for Nations League, next Gold Cup, and beyond. I know it's not an easy fix, but... We should get rid of all the baggage and start fresh from the Federation. I guess you're referring to the administrators. Yeah, that would be a good start. I think certainly that's something that we have to consider. The administrators and everything of that nature. That's something that we definitely need. So hopefully. Um, well, as it relates to administrators, let me just say that you have some good person that are doing good work, like Roy Simpson. He's absolutely brilliant as a team manager. So he's not somebody that I would want to get rid of in the program at all so you know it's it's good yeah and down to the players yeah yeah down to the players you're right what's up with Demari gray does he still want still want to play for jamaica yeah he's still but he needs a passport before that can be a reality we need to stop playing on the back foot and start applying pressure forcing teams back yeah that's something that we need to do anything on krista j daily at this point in time my friend no, nothing at this point in time. Uh, nothing new right, right now. But I know about, remember his time with the Jamaica under 17 and the great things that he did do at youth level. So, yeah. Simon Mattox and the rest of the Reggae Boys are only going to burn fire on your introducing player to get them out. No, it's actually funny, you know, because Hakka respects me and Hakka talks to me from time to time. Mattox rates me as well. So if if you're maybe look, I don't as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, I haven't heard a player that says that they don't like me or anything like that or say they have a problem with me. I've never heard that. Especially from a Jamaican born player. Never heard that. Only one player has ever rejected an interview from me, and that was O'Neill Fisher. Only one player has ever rejected an interview from me. That's it. Simon, your thoughts on Mattox and Hakka situation? Well, I said what I had to say in a previous video, and like I said already, the Super Chat is working, so do contribute to the channel. All right, so with, with this situation, Hakka is, I mean, Mattox is right, yes and no. He's right that we should have kept the core from that Gold Cup of 2015, because when Tapa came in, we didn't see no return of West Morgan, no return of Gareth McCleary, no return of Joby, no return of Maps for that 2017 Gold Cup. Could those four individuals plus Giles Barnes have made an impact to help us win the 2017 Gold Cup? Absolutely. So there are certain aspects that I agree with Mattox is saying. But do we really think that the likes of uh, Ladale Ritchie, Michael Binns, was going to form part of the 2022 cycle? Personally, in my opinion, no. So that's why I said there's aspects that he's absolutely bang correct with. Absolutely spot on with. So yeah. What division is that? You mean for Luca Levy? The sixth tier. The guys need to control the ball when receiving a pass. They do. They really, really do. COVID set us back. We did not get government support. Yeah, those are two issues. I used to play with Daly when he was in primary school or grade eight. That's why I'm so interested in his development. 
Yeah, once I do get the latest, I will keep you informed. If Jamaica gets a result tomorrow, what other results does Jamaica need to go their way? They need Mexico to beat Panama. They need Mexico to beat Panama. That's desperately needed. Simon, from the clippings I've seen, I haven't seen some of the players, notably Damien Lowe. Yeah. Jamaica needs an attacking midfielder. Yeah. All right. One second, guys. Let me get my phone to see if Haka is calling me. One second. <laughs> I haven't gone anywhere. I just need to check what's going on. Here. Just had to. You see, that's the thing, guys. You know, when you have devices such as a Samsung, the batteries burn out so quickly. Simon, do you believe the sixth tier of English football is better than the JPL? My honest opinion is that the National League, which is the fifth tier of Jamaican football, uh, sorry, the, the fifth tier of English football is on par with the Jamaica Premier League. The sixth tier is, for me, just a shade below it in terms of the quality. What the sixth tier in England has over Jamaica, obviously, is that players are play, paid better. We're talking about players that get... We're talking about perhaps a 1,000 to 1,500 pounds a month. A 300,000 Jamaican dollars a month is decent money for a professional. Well... For a footballer, of course, it'll be better, but 300,000 Jamaican dollars a month compared to 30,000 Jamaican a month here on the island. I mean, that tells you everything that you need to know, right? That tells you everything that you need to know. So I I think we're spot on. We're, so we'll have to see how that goes. You know what I mean? We can't string 10 passes together. Is it a coaching tactic? It's not a coaching tactic, no, it's not. Jamaica needs preparation. Yeah. Has Fletcher's deal collapsed or still on? It's still on, it's still on. The international clearance is the biggest, biggest um, situation right, right now with it. I think we missed a, a step with not calling up Kevin Lambert. Yeah. Should have had him in the mix, honestly. I honestly feel like. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more questions from you guys? Let me know, let me know, let me know, let me know. Let me know what you guys gotta say. Let me know. Let me see if my good friend can answer his phone or if he's doing a live right now. But let's see what you guys are saying. How many World Cup spots will FIFA give Punk? All right. So we know you would say Canada makes her automatic. Punk is going to get three more automatic spots, right? And in addition to those three automatic spots, the team that finished fourth and fifth will head to the intercontinental playoffs. So potentially, you could have eight CONCACAF teams at the next World Cup. So if you finish fourth and fifth... ...in the qualifiers for 2020, you are and join the host trio of the US, US, Mexico, and of course, Canada. So yeah, that's the situation. So. You guys can let me know how you feel about that. How do you feel? So, 
Yeah. Matox have a point. However, the squad that did well in the Gold Cup was a bit too old if the player were 18 at the time. There are certain aspects. Like I said, I agree. I agree. Lambert was invited to Peru game but could not go. That's correct. That younger, that's younger from Phoenix Whisper. What do you think about Phoenix Rising? Or oh, the youngster from Phoenix. Who is oh Levi Levi Clark? Yeah, Levi Clark was the person that I said. Yeah. Why don't we play teams like Trinidad Cuba? We will eventually. What's the mood like in the camp? Optimistic. Optimistic. It's upbeat and it's So that's the way things are at this point in time. Simon, over the years, how many good players you've you found and JFF can't find them? And we need regular practice matches. Yeah, that's true. Phoenix Academy, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're asking me which good players at Phoenix Rising? Is that what you're asking me? Simon, do you believe we need a new background coaching staff? Not not entirely. The, the physios are good. They're top class. Roy Roden, Roden is one of the best in the country alongside Garon Brown, two products of GC Foster College and absolutely brilliant at what they do. The physios are absolutely fantastic. All right. Norman Stone, the equipment manager, he's the best in the business. Do I think he could use some help? Absolutely. So no changes there at all. Physio, Mathsus's equipment manager, brilliant. Roy Simpson, world-class team manager. In those aspects right there, they're good. Lamar Morgan, the, the fitness coach, brilliant. No question marks with those persons. Could Andre Wog help Lamar Morgan in the future? Absolutely, he could. So in terms of those backroom staff members, no problem at all. Would there persons in the backroom staff that I would add? Yes, analyst and a statistician, two separate persons, and a match analyst, that's three persons right there, have a social media representative to travel with the team, not only one, not only two, but three. You need a cameraman, you need somebody that, that does the social media posting, you need somebody that does the questioning, you need somebody that, that can work on JFF Live to call the games. Come on, man. Come on. Yes, it can. Simon is talking about Dijon Richards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is John and Luca related? I think Luca is his his name on his birth certi certificate is John John Luca Levy. All right, but we call him Luca because that's what we call him Luca. Yeah, just like Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire's name is not Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire's name is Jacob Maguire. John, uh, uh, Joe Hart's name is not Joe Hart. His name is Charles Hart. His middle name is Joe. Harry Maguire's name is not Harry Maguire. His name is Jacob Harry Maguire. So his name is, uh, call him Luca Levy. His name is Luca Levy. His, that's, his, that's his middle name, Luca, but his, his official name is John. But so it go. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Rupert, but my name is Simon. So so it go. Simon, given the schoolboy football season, do you think scouts should start going to rural areas that that's something that has been done already to be on be honest with you we need to have our own identity of play and i believe former players should be running jff with the passion for recruitment okay i agree i agree you need to have persons that are passion well said simon they need to update their social medias now yeah it's a revenue stream right there I was asking because of the last name, not because of the Luca. Oh, you're the best person to run, Jeff. I appreciate the commendation. Guys, for those of you that are just tuning in, Super Chats are now active. So just click on the, click on the Super Chat and give your support to the channel. And you will see what comes your way. <laughs> More quality content and everything of that nature. You will not be disappointed. I promise you, I promise you all, you will not be disappointed. It's going to be good. I'll continue to provide all the latest information for you all, and it will be credible. It will be informative and everything of that nature.
But does the JFF have the money to pay the many staff members? Maybe not. Blessing Simon. We need a Spanish coach who can identify players with good off-the-ball movement. Don't think we'll have the funds for that at this point in time. JFF needs a YouTube channel. Well, JFF Live. JFF Live is there. But you have Reggae Boys commentary, so you don't need anything more because Reggae Boys commentary was here before JFF Live. JFF Live has become stagnant, and Reggae Boys commentary is still going almost six years on. So Reggae Boys channel is your channel. Reggae Boys channel is here to stay. Reggae Boys channel is here to stay. The only thing that would stop Reggae Boys commentary is if my life is not here tomorrow morning. That's the only thing that stops Reggae Boys commentary. Reggae Boys commentary will continue on and on and on and on. I saw the players in training and doing a game review. How the JPL gets international exposure. Referees. Getting overseas referees is one. Broadcasters getting getting contacts overseas is another. Promotion of the product, I think they're starting with introducing it on the stock exchange. That's going to tremendously help. Jeff needs about fifteen more staff member members. Roughly speaking, yeah, another fifteen. You're absolutely spot on. Fifteen is basically. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Oh, fifteen more people. Oh, fifteen more people indeed. That's critical. Yeah, this, this was players just getting accustomed to the monitors that are using for VAR. That's basically what it is. Mr. Hall needs more time. Yeah, what's the point in changing another coach for for the Nations League, and if that coach doesn't do well in Nations League, you're going to chop him again. The next coach comes and goal copy doesn't do well. Are we going to change a coach every two years? No, we need some sort of consistency. And I'm willing to give him a run. The only reason I would set um, Paul Hall out is, is if we go to the goal cup and we can't get to the semi-finals. For me, that would be a big, 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 massive no-no. So that's why for me, Personally, I feel that that's going to be important from, from that aspect. So we shall see. We'll see what happens. And we hope for the best. So what do you guys think? I think once we can get the JPL to a top 30 league, Jamaica football as a whole, yeah, it'd be good. Is Tapa and JFF to be blamed and players to take accountability? Yes. Greetings, Simon. Greetings. Simon, how quick can the JFF come out of its debt? You got 2 million US dollars? If you got 2 million US dollars, put 1 million in the super chat right now and 1 million in the JFF debt and we're good. This man has something great to offer. Who is that? Are you talking about me? Oh, thank you. JFF needs a proper PR and marketing strategy. This team looks better. They do. They do look better. So, yeah. Why the JFF do not call up Alex Marshall? This man just got COVID now. You know, he has to recover in that sense. Ralston Rickett says Paul Hall. Yeah. Yeah. 
Simon, it's puzzling. How or why Dwayne Miller at a club for six years and not playing? He's not at Sirianaska anymore, you know. He's not at Sirianaska anymore. Phil Jones says, what's up, Simon? All right, cuz. Hope you're doing good, mate. Up in Lancashire. Yeah, that's my cousin, Phil Jones. And not, a lot of people might not know, but Phil Jones's grandparents on, on the mum's side was actually born in Jamaica. Not a lot of people know that, but Phil Jones has Jamaican heritage. Not a lot of people know that. But I try to tell people all the time that Jamaica is a diverse country. People like Emile Smith-Rowe and Tori Cantwell and Phil Jones and many, many others, they have Jamaican heritage. And I told people already about Cole Palmer, that the heritage he has already with St. Kitts and Nevis. So don't be surprised when you see light-skinned people have Jamaican or Caribbean heritage. It's not a surprise. So honestly, it shouldn't be something you should be surprised about. What are your thoughts on building for World Cup 2026? One step at a time. Let's focus on beating Costa Rica. If we can't beat Costa Rica tomorrow, then we can start thinking about that. The thing is that Paul was thrown in a team with a basic on their faces. Yeah, he took the job under difficult, difficult, difficult circumstances. Big up Mr. Preston. I remember the Reggae Boys forum thing. Yeah, Jamaican youth. What was What's your name on the on the forum? But yeah, you know my own already. So where is Mr. Miller now, Simon? Well, believe it or not, Dwayne Miller is not playing for Syrian Asco. Dwayne Miller, right, right now, as we speak, is playing for a Swedish first division club. That's where he is right, right now, as we speak. And he's playing for a team called Ekelstuna City FK. And Ekelstuna City FK actually don't play in the first tier, but in fact, division three in Sweden. And that is where he is playing his football at this point in time. But he's no longer at Syrian Asco. Not everything you read on Wikipedia is factual. Just remember that. Jamaica needs Tyrant McGee. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. We need him. <laughs> He's just seeing the comments, guys. It's it's funny. <laughs> I'm just scrolling through the comments, guys, and some of you are just hilarious. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is funny. Hey, it works. <laughs> Wait, is it? Wait, is it? So, what's your what's your scoreline for Panama Mexico? Mexico three, Panama nil. Why Jeff have never got Mitchell? Because they did not reach out to him. Creating the training session on a scale of 1 to 10, 7. That's good for Miller. Yeah, if it's good. Simon, if you become Jeff president, what will be the first thing that you would do? The first thing I would do, to be quite frank with you, is arrange the database of all players eligible to represent Jamaica from the senior level down to the under-17 level for both men and women, even futsal and beach soccer. Michael Gordon, my friend, thank you so much. You're the first person. I appreciate it greatly. Keep up the great work. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And long may I continue, yeah. Thoughts of Ravel's performance against Panama. Five and a half out of ten. Simon, there is your super chat. I see. Thank you very much. First ever super chat, eh? Five years later. I used to just read the content on the forum. Okay. All right, cool. 
Yeah, believe it or not, I, I'm the same person that went by the name JY and was being bombarded by the senior man in the forum. But so you go, you take a lick, so you move on, eh? Michael Gordon, remember the name, the legend. <laughs> Everything should be thrown at preparing for 2026. Jamaica going to be a big dog with automatic qualification. Well, we'll have to. Isn't there under 20 qualifiers soon? Yes, that is coming up quite soon. Under 20 qualifiers is coming up quite, quite soon. Sam Ronaldo said that anyone who is a celebration, he will sue them. <laughs> Michael Gordon, anytime and every time, Sam, and you're excellent. Of respect. Of respect. No. Of respect. Fans. They're pitting off at the game tomorrow, but whenever fans are available at the stadium, guys. Guys, please chat about football. Please reach out to me if you feel like you want to just have a chat and everything of that nature. You're free to do so, to approach me, and then we can have a discussion from there. All right, guys. So come to me in person. We can talk. We can take picture. Anything you want to do. When I pay me in person, just heal me. I will warn you, though, I am a lot taller than I seem, so don't let that intimidate you. I mean, it doesn't intimidate women, so it shouldn't intimidate you as men either. So, but yeah, my cousin plays under 23 is interested in Jamaica. Alrighty, cool, cool. This is what I want you to do. Hit me up on Instagram, a Simon Preston, and I want you to private message me his name and his contact details, and I will pass it on to the relevant individuals and make contact with him and make the cogs wallet from there. Your cousin plays for Middlesbrough under 23 is good stuff. We could perhaps get him into the pool for Paris 2024 qualification. Big up, brother. Big up, my boss. Hope you're doing good, man. Hope you're doing good, Ryan. LFC, the boss in other place. Yeah. Big up, big up, big up, big up, big up. Ryan, guys, do check out Ryan LFC. Me hear some people calling the man Ryan KFC. Why Why have some people like that? Honestly, why have some people like that? Why? Why people <laughs> talk all the man Ryan KFC? I want to some people. Sure. Oh, boy, may I tell you. Anyways. I have one comment person in the comment that named Giovanni. Giovanni said... <laughs> I'm going to repeat that one there, but big up, Ryan. We need some new defenders. Yes, we do. Not at all. Not at all. Far from it. Far. Far. We have to get it right for now because 2026 is going to be a tough one. Yep. Suriname Curacao getting their passports. Bermuda is going to call up their players that play their trade. League 2, League 1, National League in England. So they're going to be strengthening it as well. And like I said, we know the situation with Costa Rica, Panama, and Honduras. They're going to be ready. You're the only Jamaican football channel I watch that is credible when it comes to Jamaican football. Much appreciated, Ralston. Really, really appreciated. Simon is the future of Jamaican football. Just need to rebuild with most local players. Oh, in the future of Jamaican football, you need to rebuild most of the local players. I still think you're going to need a balance. I don't think you can ignore the core of the... I don't think you can uh, avoid the diaspora. And based on the, the talent that's and the diaspora in the UK, we're going to have that with us until perhaps the 2034 cycle. So it's not something we can avoid at all. Jamaica will go in the Nations League, trust me. I really, really hope so. Ethan is a very calm customer. Yeah, he's a good player. No doubt about it. He had his best game against Mexico. Do you think Jamaica will attract more English-based players after these shocking performances? Yeah, a couple will. Yeah. Absolutely, a couple will definitely play. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, man, a couple will play. That, no doubt about it. I promise you. You're going to have some that are going to play. You'll see. Yeah, because they want to be set themselves up for the 2026 cycle. So that's why I said what I said. So 
Yeah. So, right. Dujon Whisper Richards. Good player, isn't it? Miami signed Romeo Parks today. Interesting. We need to sit for League, Nations League, Gold Cup. There's very, very little room for, to wiggle in friendlies unless it's on a non FIFA date. Why do they, they call Pinock Halloman? Halo Man? Because man like to play video games, Halo. Uh, Rupert, we call him still. Rupert. Oh, that was, that's how we call him, man. Rupert with a snoop, with a stew pert. So you know what the thing go already. I have to show up my virgin one second and see what I go on. Ryan LFC was in the chat, you know? All right. Okay, cool. Who's your favorites for the World Cup this year? The Red Devils. And it's such a difficult World Cup because of many reasons. One, it's in November, so you so a lot of players are not going to be in that post-season form. A lot of players are still going to find a rhythm of things. So November time when the World Cup is, players are going to be trying to find a, a groove in proceedings. Plus, the next thing is the, is where the games are going to be played in a completely different atmosphere and environment. It's not in Europe. It's in the Middle East. How will they cope with the sort of conditions, temperatures, etc.? That's something different to, to pin in. So that's why I think if this World Cup is so difficult, it could go to a South American team. I really hope it doesn't, but yeah. It could be. What's the situation with Jovan Anderson? Man needs a Jamaican passport. So that is the situation. You see the players that played in the Peru game, the JFF just need to keep most of them players together. And that is spot on, my brethren. So, Reggae Boys fans, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about all of this? Do you feel good? What's the starting 11 for tomorrow? <laughs> Send, drop $100 in the super chat and I'll tell you the starting 11 for the game tomorrow. Uh, $100 US dollars, and I will tell you the starting 11 for the game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You think I joke? You don't see me laughing with you, do you? All right, cool. Good. Italy are your favorites. I don't like... Portugal is going to beat them in the playoffs. I just don't like the, the style, honestly. I know it's different compared to what we've seen from past Italian teams. And look, I'm a big fan of Chiesa. I'm a massive, massive fan of him. When, you're on, when he's on the ball, I know something is bound to happen. Honestly, I know something is bound to happen, but... We know Italy. We know Italy got World Cup. Once you have Cristiano Ronaldo playing his fifth World Cup. Wait, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22. Yeah, fifth World Cup. Is that what we want to say? Why Norman Campbell not in the squad? Man, say English thing, land 2P. <laughs> oh, boy, man, tell you. <laughs> Yeah, you see you, you know, you see, you know, you know, them call people like you, them a crab in a barrel, crab in a barrel, them a crab in a barrel, crab in a barrel. No, Messi is not the goat. CR7 is the goat. Anyways, well, with Canada at the World Cup, we're certainly going to have some players with Jamaican representation at the World Cup, aren't we? Junior Hoylet, who was this close to playing for Jamaica. And of course, Daniel Henry, I'm sure, will make the final squad. Will Toussaint Rick it's way can make it? Well, we shall see. No, England is gonna win the England is gonna win the 2022 World Cup. Oh, I said Portugal is gonna win it already, didn't I? No, I mean I said Belgium was gonna win it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Big up Simon, that's good for Luca. Where is the club located? 
club is located in South London. The club is located in South London. But guys, honestly, you know who is the greatest ever goal scorer to play football? The greatest ever goal scorer to play football goes by the name of William Ralph Dean, also known as Dixie Dean, former Everton player. The greatest ever goal scorer. I didn't say player, greatest ever goal scorer of all time. The best finisher is Tommy Taylor. What's your prediction for the AFCON this weekend? I feel Senegal this tournament, you know. You're right, Neymar. Yes, Sonny, in it. You're right, Neymar. Yes, Sonny, in it. That was the conversation with Jesse Lingard and Neymar. No, it was Marcus Rashford and Neymar. Do you remember in the tunnel back in 20, 2017, in it? Yeah, yeah, of course, obviously. El Padrino says, big up, Simon. All right, so the super chat is working. I am delighted with that. I got one super chat from the evening. And come on, guys. You know, if you want inside scoops in things, you bought a super chat. You want the starting 11 for the game tomorrow? You put 100 US dollars in the super chat. If you want to know who's Jamaica's next head coach, you put something in the super chat. You heard me. CR7, player for United, Mink. Yeah, of course, that's a Mancunian accent. I told people already because my dad's side of the family is Manchester. So I have roots in the Salford area. That's like also, that's where Eddie Coleman grew up in that way. So, yeah, of course, a Mancunian accent comes quite naturally to me. And I know if I a little bit put more emphasis into it, I sound like I come from Lancashire when I go a little bit up the board. But the way I'm talking right now is like a Mancunian accent. I know. about that Depesta. So when I talk to Paul Hall, I put on the Mancunian accent as well. So if you listen to the way that Paul Hall talks, it's similar to the same way as well. So yeah, but the way that I'm speaking right now is what comes the most natural to me. Born in Jamaica, obviously. And I know people will be asking if I speak Pato quite well. I don't, but it is what it is. My roots are Manchester as well. Is it? Is it, Man is it money? Really? Is it Salford, Bolton, Wigan? Which part? But, but it's brilliant. You know, whenever I'm in Manchester, you know which side I'm on? I'm sometimes in the Piccadilly side, but when I'm in Salford, I'm, I'm near the, the, the tube station. You know, exchange keys. Not not the tube, silly. It's it's a tram, though, isn't it? Yeah, the tram that comes across the road and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the trams. Yeah, yeah. So near exchange keys. Yeah, it's just shouts out Old Trafford. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. What do you think about Greenwood situation? I'll comment more on the matter. Oh, Manchester, Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I passed through my hoop. Bedtime. Guys, did you know that between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is when the brain cells repair? So, yeah. It's harder to do a London accent, you know what I mean? Because... When you're going from Mancunian to London, it, it's a different one. But all I can say really is that when you go and play for West Ham, the West Ham people, they talk like that, though, isn't it? Because when you're playing at West Ham, the people like Michael Antonio and Lanzania and them players, they, because they come from the uh, Cockney, don't they? So they talk like that, though, don't they? So that's kind of like what, what people in, in East London are like. Manchester City, ain't it? No, Boris. Be nice to see England win 2022 since Jamaica's not going to be there. It's normally when Jamaica's not to work up a chair for them as well. Come on, England. Come on, England. Come on, England. Any club interested in King, may I ask? Richard King. At this point in time, I'm not aware of overseas interest in him right, right now. The blogger they call JD, you don't like none of the players that are based in Jamaica. It's like you don't remember that when we made to the World Cup 98, the team was more like a local place. But times have changed, my friend. Times have changed. Football has gotten better. You're going to need your best players to take the field. Was the Phil Jones thing a joke? No, Phil Jones has Jamaican heritage. Hey, bro. I'm from London and that's not it, bro. 
I told you when you have a northern accent, it's different because when you when you're talking down south, it, it, it's much harder. So that's why I, I can't do the London accent. I just know that when you're in East London. Uh, and the West Ham fans, they 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 cut their words and all that. So, yeah, I know it's it's much tougher. That's why a London accent come is is, is hard to do. But when you're in Liverpool, like you talk a bit like this, that's why I have a Scouse action. We have Jamie Carragher and Steven Gerrard and them lot. I mean, you have Liverpool, Everton Football Club, and Tranmere Rovers. So those are the three biggest clubs in Merseyside. So you got the Mancunian accent, and then you got the Scouse accent. And when you go to Yorkshire, you talk a little bit like Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips and them lot, really. So when you're in Yorkshire, they put a lot of stress on the words, you know what I mean? And when you go up north, like when you're in Newcastle or Sunderland, like like Jordan Pickford and Jordan Henderson, like and True Jordy, where they put a lot of emphasis on the words like mortal and Alan Shearer. So when you're up north in northeast, it's a little bit stronger, the words really. If England win the World Cup, just retire the sport. Stop it. Hall will have a lot of friendlies. Well, Nations League and Gold Cups, yeah. Luca is on my turf. I hope to go see him soon. Hamlet. Dolby Hamlet. Okay. Yes, please do. What do you mean when you're in show so far for the England show? I mean, when you're trying to talk about England and all these players that come together. I mean, I'm Jimmy Carragher so, so far. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? So far, you have Daniel's. Storage that my friends is Daniel Sturridge. I mean Jamie Carragher. Please school me on the Phil Jones link. My interest is totally peaked. Maternal side of the family. What more you need to know? Emile Smith Rowe, paternal side of the family. Toddy Cantwell, paternal side of the family. Cole Palmer, paternal side of the family. Kitishan. Of course, the Jimmy action is spot on. I told you already. All right, let me go talk to my friend Stephen Gerrard now. Yeah, of course, him. I don't know why people are laughing about. I moved from Rangers to go down to, to Aston Villa Football Club to try, try to make a difference. I mean, I saw a player called Liam Bailey. He's really, really excited to work with him. But as I entered the dressing room, he's talking about cramps in his knee. Like, so I just had to go back up north, back to Scotland, because I know I wasn't going to be working with a player like Liam Bailey because I told I was told he was the next John Barnes and those lots. So, yeah, of course. Mm. Stephen Gerrard. Would Jamaica ever win the World Cup? No. True, if England will retire the sport. Stop it. Have you heard about the Greenwood situation? What do you think? I commented it on a previous video, so you guys can go and check that out. Okay, guys? The previous video, you guys can go and look at that. Okay? Cool. And once more information unfold, I'll produce a further video on the matter. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Reggae Boys Commentary. It's been fun. It's been great. I've really, really enjoyed speaking with you guys, but it's been good. So let's stay in touch. Big game tomorrow. Prediction Jamaica 1, Costa Rica 0. Come on, guys. Let's go. He's in Rochford from St. Kitts and Nevis. His mom's side, St. Kitts and Nevis, and his dad's side, Jamaica. So, yeah. Big up all the people in the chat. Don't forget the super chat as well, guys. Alrighty then. Keep safe, guys. Take care. Greenfoot.